In this first episode of Star Hopping with Kissimmee Park Observatory, we'll look at the rich Sagittarius region and show you how to find these beautiful deep sky objects. The Lagoon Nebula, the Triffid Nebula, and the large globular cluster Messier 22. All right, let's go star hopping. Star hopping. Hey there, and welcome to the first episode of Star Hopping with Kissimmee Park Observatory. I'm Dave Herm, and I'm very excited to be your host. In this series of programs, we'll show you the most beautiful sights in the night sky and explain exactly how to find them with your binoculars or telescope. Well, lucky for us, we're starting off in one of the best times of the year to look for some beautiful and relatively bright deep sky objects. Late summer nights begin with the Milky Way appearing straight overhead. If you're in a place away from city lights, you can look straight up and see a glow that extends the whole way from the northeastern sky, the whole way down to the southern horizon. This glow is caused by the collective light of millions of stars in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Seen from far above, the Milky Way would look something like this galaxy, where we live about halfway out in one of the spiral arms. When you look toward the deep southern sky, the Milky Way appears brighter that's because you're looking across the spiral arms towards the core of the galaxy. The brightest part of the Milky Way lies in the constellation of Sagittarius, which is where we'll be pointing our telescopes tonight. Here's Sagittarius. It looks like a teapot. Can you see it? It has a handle, a lid, and a spout. We'll be starting our hunt from the top star in the lid, which is named Caus Borealis. So now we're going to start a process called star hopping. When you use star hopping to find a particular deep sky object like a nebula, a galaxy, or a star cluster, you start at a bright star and then hop or move to another star close by, all the while referring to your star chart or electronic star atlas. You continue to hop to other stars, moving closer to your target. Once you get close, you can judge the distance and direction needed to find your target, and voila, there it is in your telescope's eyepiece. So as we mentioned, we will start our search at the top star in the teapot, Caus Borealis. There are many targets in this area to keep you busy, but the brightest and arguably the most beautiful is the Lagoon Nebula, entry number eight on the famous Messier list. This list of 110 star clusters, nebula, and galaxies was compiled by the French astronomer Charles Messier in the 1700s and is the list that beginning amateur astronomers try to tackle first, some of which are pretty challenging to locate. It amazes me that they could find some of these faint objects so long ago. But back to the Lagoon Nebula. This massive area of nebulosity is a stellar nursery, a birthplace of stars. The red color of the nebula is due to glowing clouds of hydrogen, excited into luminescence by the energy streaming from the young stars within it. To find the lagoon, we move up from Caus Borealis and look for another star about the same brightness, about eight degrees above it. Looking at your fist against the night sky uh, spans about 10 degrees, so it's just a bit smaller than that. The second star is called Polis. Now imagine an equilateral triangle, all sides the same length, with a base between Caus Borealis and Polis. Where the third point of the triangle would lie out to the right, you will see a small fuzzy patch. Turning your telescope to it, you have found the Lagoon Nebula. In medium-sized telescopes, the lagoon is an easily seen object appearing as a swirling patch of nebulosity with a generous smattering of stars in and around it. Well, congratulations on your first star hop. Well, it was kind of a triangulation. But the concept is the same. You just have to use positions and shapes outlined by the surrounding stars in order to locate your target object. Sometimes it's easy, like this one, but sometimes it can be a bit challenging. But when you finally locate a tough object, there's a lot of satisfaction and pride in your success. The great thing about this particular area of the sky is there are so many other objects close by. So you can use the object you're on, in this case, the Lagoon Nebula, to start your next star hop. I guess in this case, we should call it a nebula hop. Our next target, the equally famous Triffid Nebula, is only one degree away. This is the distance that just one finger covers on the night sky at arm's length. 
The Triffid is another emission nebula, but it has an interesting feature of having some additional reflection nebula behind it. In addition to the cooler red-orange stars within the emission nebula, there are some hotter blue stars outside of it. This light from the blue stars bounces off the reflection nebula and makes the nebula appear blue. Add to that an open star cluster associated with the complex, and even a dark nebula in front of it that seems to split the emission nebula into three parts. Wow, that certainly makes for a gorgeous nebula in astrophotos like this one taken at the observatory. So, let's star hop. Starting from the amazing Lagoon Nebula that you currently have in your eyepiece, all you need to do is move slowly upward and away from the teapot lid, and the Triffid will appear in your eyepiece. So one comment about viewing these nebulae that appear so colorful in astrophotos. Unless you have an extremely large telescope, most nebulae and galaxies appear ghostly white through a telescope. Many people find this somewhat disappointing the first few times. But once you start to recognize these faint fuzzies, you know when you've found a target. The reason we don't see color in the eyepiece is because the light is too faint to activate the cone cells in our eyes. So the rod cells see the light, but there's no color information, so the deep sky objects appear ghostly pale. Now the brightest stars can stimulate your cone cells, so we can see yellow stars like Capella and Auriga, and orange stars like Antares and Scorpius, or blue stars like Vega and Lyra. I like to show star color comparisons at public observing sessions, which the kids and some of the adults really enjoy. So one more star hop for this episode. We're going to locate the massive globular star cluster, Messier 22. A globular cluster is a densely packed group of stars that all form together. As Carl Sagan eloquently described it, a globular cluster is like a cloud of bees, bound by gravity, every bee a star. I've always wanted to say that on camera. Anyway, in some of these globulars, there are hundreds of thousands of stars, and in some rare cases, over a million stars can comprise one of these magnificent objects. Okay, to locate M22, we return to Caus Borealis at the top of the lid of the teapot in Sagittarius. This is a little more of an elaborate star hop, so you'll need to use a low power eyepiece in your scope or your binoculars. So let's do it. To the left of Caus, about a half degree away, lies a pair of stars that form a triangle with Caus. From the bottom star of that pair, continue another half degree in the same direction, you will locate another star of approximately the same brightness. Now we make a leap of faith and move another full degree in the same direction until we discover four or five stars, the brightest two being 24 and 25 Sagittarius. That's the name of a star in Sagittarius. You'll know it when you find them. Now we're getting close to M22. Move another half degree in the same direction and oh my goodness, glorious M22 comes into view. A larger scope will resolve this beast to the core, and it will cover half the eyepiece at 100x magnification. Now that's a payoff for your efforts. So that's our three targets in Sagittarius for this episode. I hope you enjoyed hopping around the Milky Way. We're really looking forward to bringing these astronomical tutorials to you as often as possible. They'll be designed to help you find deep sky objects that are up in the sky at the time we post the tutorials to YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, click like, and share them with all your friends. Also, please feel free to leave a question or comment below, and we'll be sure to respond quickly. And as well, please follow us on Facebook, where we post all of our astrophotos and keep everyone informed about upcoming astronomical events. All these links to these places, including our website, kpobservatory.org, can be found below in the notes as well. And finally, if you feel this video provides you value, and if you'd like to see more, please consider supporting us on Patreon, where for a small amount, like $1, $3, or $5 per video, you can support our efforts and let us make even more great astronomy tutorials like this one. Well, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time on Star Hopping with the Kissimmee Park Observatory.